Hi, this is David Gawley from Pentagon Solutions and I'd like to take a look at Global Mapper 11. Global Mapper is a fantastic tool for editing, manipulating and viewing any geospatial data. Um, and one of the first areas I'm going to have a look at is um, Rathlin Island off the top coast of Northern Ireland. I've got a clipped um, Argaski grid file that I'm simply going to drag and drop. I'm going to put it into the Irish grid. I'm going to hit OK. So you can see we've got a very, very good definition in here. Again, it is coming in 3D. So if I have a look at that in the 3D view, we can see the definition. And again, I can adjust and change the vertical exaggeration. But well, because we want to see some more of the features, what I'm going to have a look at is bringing in some of the ECW files. These are 25 centimeter resolution provided by Ordnance Survey in Northern Ireland, or LPS as they're now known. Again, I'm going to drag and drop and use the same coordinate system for all of them. And um, again, we're getting good definition down here. If I look at the harbour, I can zoom and pan. I can use my new fly tool that's now available in Global Mapper um, 11. Again, I can scroll out as well. I can take it out to the whole island. Again, go to my 3D view, go to my orbit and zoom out and we can get to see the whole um, features around the island. Again, so that, that's my Argaski grid file and um, I've got my ECW, but if I need to add on some additional information in there, um, so what I've got, I've got some shape files. I'm simply going to drag and drop. So all different formats the Global Mapper will take in, the terrain models will take in map info files, Ezra based files, Autodesk, uh, DWG, DXF, etc. in here, but we'll also export to a wide range of formats as well. Again, we can zoom in, have a look at it, and again, go to our 3D model. We can perform some analysis, so if I wanted to see what an increase in water level, how that would have an impact on the surrounding area, we can actually see that. So we can see we've got a general flood in there, increase in sea level of 6 metres, how that would actually flood the harbour area in question. We've got nice bits and tools, uh, bits and pieces of tools that we can actually use in uh, Global Mapper. And uh, one of them is the transmission shed. So if I actually look, I've put a transmission tower here. I'm going to say that the transmission elevation is 10 metres and it's got a view at 10 metres or 2 metres off the ground. Let's keep this simple and do a 1.5 kilometre radius. And We'll keep an accuracy, this is down to the pixelation on the ground, uh, to 5 metres squares. So if I hit OK, it'll actually run that transmission. And you'll see, that's my view shed. So from that point, the, the red areas are the exact areas that the transmission um, will be able to transmit to. So again, zoom in, we can take that into our 3D view. Uh, we can see that from a 3D perspective. Some other nice tools that we have in here um, is we can um, control the styles. So if I was looking at the likes of my ECW files, I could change the options and maybe make them a bit more transparent so we can see the underlying um, digital um, elevation model. Um, other bits and pieces that we can actually do is we can create some contours. So if I generate some contours, let's create them at a two meter interval. I'll draw a box here and hit OK and hit OK and let it generate the contours and you can see the contours have quite good definition so if I take off some of the underlying elements so this can be seen a bit clearer you can see we've got good definition on the contours um, um, pretty much along the embankment here and I could export that and bring it into Civil 3D and triangulate it for further analysis etc. Um, the other thing we could do is we could export the view shed as a shape file and I'm going to use this in Land Explorer. So I'm going to select this view shed here. I'm going to simply export it out. Uh, you can see the wealth of different formats of data that you got in here, KMZ, etc. All bits and pieces of data. So I'm going to export that out. I'm going to hit OK. Let's export it as an area. To the desktop, call it trans, trans for transmission. And I'll hit OK and let's export it out. So I'm going to use that in uh, a wee minute here. And let's bring some of our data back in. But before we did, say if we wanted to publish this to Google um, Maps or Google Earth, etc. in here, we could look at our export web format. 
Let's publish this out to um, Google Map Tiles. Um, we'll call this sample. We'll pick the existing format, that's okay, and we'll create a new file. We'll say call it transmission. And this is our transmission area. Now if we hit save, it'll publish it out as a series of PNG files. We'll view it in the browser. Let's allow the block content there. And again, we could plug this into um, our own websites or we could share it out with other users. And again, you can see our view, our actual transmission area. So I can zoom in further. And we'll get the stage where we'll zoom in and it'll drop out the actual area. So as I zoom out, it'll pop in again. So it's a quite quick way to publish the Google Maps. Um, but lastly, the one area that we're going to look at is what happens if I wanted to bring this into um, another product. So I've got my view shed area in here and it's in a 3D view. But say I wanted to put in some building content. Well, new product from Autodesk is Land Explorer and um, I will cover this in additional webcast. This is Land Explorer here. I've got uh, the island of Rathlin here and you can see I've got some uh, building data populated. What I'm going to do is take off some of the vegetation and the parcel layers. So we can see some of the other features. I'm going to pan across and zoom in. So you can see in here that I've taken some of the shape files and I've populated as the buildings. Now this is quite a low level of detail. We can add on frontages in here but I'm not, go I'm not going to do this at this stage. Um, because say I want this from a planning perspective. Um, so what I'm going to do is zoom out and create a new vector layer. Uh, we'll call this transmission. And what I'm going to do with the transmission layer is I'm going to import the shape file. That I've just exported from Global Mapper to my desktop. I'm going to change the color here so we can see the standout. So from a 3D point of view, we can now start to analyze the houses and the areas that will actually be impacted by the uh, new transmission mast area in here. Again, we could do a bit of a flyby on it um, and have a look at this in the background. So that's Global Mapper 11 and a quick sneak peek at Autodesk's Land Explorer. Um, again, we're a Global Mapper affiliate. We're also an Autodesk resource. If you need any further information on the products, please email me at david at pent, P -E -N -T, dash, sol, sol .com. Thanks a lot.